Good afternoon. My name is Steve Yamaguchi. I'm one of the pastors here at Emmanuel Presbyterian Church. And on behalf of our congregation and our elders represented here, we are so glad and honored to welcome all of you to this place today. And we are overwhelmed by this outpouring of love by all those who have loved and respected Blaise and Teresa. And we are so glad to have you come from all the corners of the earth to this place. And uh, we have prayed that this will be a wonderful blessing for all. And I, like, I would like now to introduce Mimi Kennedy, who will lead us through our, through our service. Thank you, Pastor Steve. We've met here so often. Blaze has spoken here so often. And we have formed bonds of friendship and love with each other here so often. So welcome. Buena sera. <laughs> I don't know the word for afternoon. <laughs> Let us lift up our hearts. Sursum corda is the Latin for that. It is, begins the great prayer of thanksgiving in the Latin mass that Blaise loved so much that he would sing it in our singing group every time we met. Habemus ad dominum is the response to it. It means we already have lifted up our hearts to God and then follows, it is right and just always and everywhere to give thanks. So for justice sake and for love's sake, we're giving thanks today for the life of Blaise Bonpain. I'm so glad to be here with all of you. And we know we mourn his absence together for the first time all together, but we also feel his presence. So, Blaise Bonpain, presente. Blaise Bonpain, presente. Blaise Bonpain, presente. And now I would like to bring up Father Gregory Boyle, please welcome. All of us uh, stand with Teresa and Colleen and Blaise Martin. Um, after Blaise died, uh, Teresa gave me his stole uh, so I feel both honored and unworthy to wear it. I suppose it was uh, 45, 47 years ago that I kind of sort of met Blaze. I was a senior in high school. I went to go hear him speak. And he was already married to Teresa. And, um, and there were a lot of other people at this thing. I remember Jane Fonda and... Tom Hayden and Donald Sutherland and Philip Berrigan and I think Daniel Berrigan was uh, on the run. <laughs> and, um, and I just remember listening to him and I was so impressed with his clarity. And I, I remember deciding, I said, I, I want to be how he is in the world. I want to put first things recognizably first, and I want to live as though the truth were true. And I looked at him and I said, this is a man who takes seriously what Jesus uh, takes seriously. Inclusion, nonviolence, unconditional loving kindness, compassionate acceptance. And I remember saying to myself, I'll have what he's having. <laughs> and I became a Jesuit, which might have been surprising to Blaze, I guess. But Blaze was a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Uh, he liked a, a Latin saying, and vida um, mutator non tolitur, which means life has changed, not taken away, not ended which sort of aligns Blaze with uh, another kindred spirit, the Dalai Lama, who was asked in an interview once about his own eventual personal death, and he shrugged and he smiled and he said, change of clothing. <laughs> and Blaze, as we speak, is having what the Dalai Lama is having, which is to say, uh, change of clothing, life is changed not ended. 
like just about everybody in this church, you know, I've, I've been arrested a host of times, not as many times as, as Blaze, but just about every time I was arrested, I was locked up with Blaze. And, and I remember that the thing that was most striking about him was this glee. You know, you, you might have, one might have felt some anxiety, but not Blaze. It was always about joy. It was never a grim duty to live as though the truth were true and to put first things recognizably first. The great American poet William Carlos Williams said of poetry, if it ain't a pleasure, it ain't a poem. And that's exactly how Blaze lived his life, which was resonant with what Jesus says ultimately in his life. My joy yours, your joy complete. Mary Oliver has a poem called When Death Comes, and it says this, when it's over, I want to say all my life I was married to amazement I was the bridegroom taking the world into my arms. When it's over, I don't want to wonder if I have made of my life something particular and real. I don't want to find myself sighing and frightened and full of argument. I don't want to end up simply having visited this world. Well, Blaze need not worry. He didn't simply visit this world. He took it into his arms with amazement and joy. He's now become the poem, no grim duty, joy complete, and we'll all have what he's having. And so let us pray. This is a prayer taken and modified from a Hebrew prayer. And so to the sacred place we come, drawn by the eternal ties that bind our soul to the soul of blaze. Death has separated us. You are no longer at our side to share the beauty of the passing moment. We cannot look to you to lighten our burdens, to lend us your strength, your wisdom, your faith. And yet what you mean to us does not wither or fade. For a time we touched hands and hearts Still your voice abides with us. Still your tender glance remains a joy to us. For Blaze, you are a part of us forever. Something of you has become a deathless song upon our lips. And so beyond the ache that tells how much we will miss you, a deeper thought compels. We were together. We hold you still in mind and give thanks for life and love the happiness that was, the memories that do not fade, are a gift that cannot be lost. You will continue to bless our days and our years, and we will always give thanks for you. And may our God, who is spacious and expansive and who loves us without measure and without regret, bless us all as we begin this prayer of remembrance for our friend, Blaze. Please welcome Blaze's son, Blaze Martin Bonpain. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine to show my love. And that's one thing my daddy used to say, yeah. Yes, he did. In fact, that was one of the, the comments in the Bible in his most dog-eared and, and most read copies of the good book that he highlighted and emphasized the most. Let your light shine. And he did. And he did allow us to.
And even though he, ha he wanted me to go to Loyola High, <laughs> down deep inside, he was all right when I said, actually, Dad, I think I might be interested in girls at that time. Thank you. <laughs> and down deep somewhere, he wanted me to go to the seminary. But he understood that I had the same comment in relation to that idea as well. <clears throat> But he rejoiced in it also because he saw it as me taking my own path and finding my own light. And I have. My dad would love to see you all here. My dad loves seeing you all here today. Of this I am certain. I'm going to kind of start at the end for a moment. Uh, first of all, the, the very last thing that my, my, that my father heard, I'm getting a sign here, was a song that he and I wrote together while running on the Santa Monica beach when I was maybe five years old, we would run and hold hands and sing, holding hands into the water, holding hands out of the water as we, the tide came and, and left with us. And when I reminded him of that in some of his last days, I saw some of the most revealing uh, smiles that I have seen in, in, in him. And then I sang those words to him in his last moments as well. And so I know that we are at peace and he got to do, we got to say that to each other, that we were bonded forever uh, in his words. And so we have no reason, though do as you will, to hang our heads today. Uh, my father lived much longer than most people, and he lived a very full life, and a very joyful life. And uh, let it be the theme, the word that, that, that he used to describe what he thought was the most important lesson for all humanity. <laughs> I finally figured to ask him that, and I asked him, in an emergency room when, again, it seemed like it was his last day. It wasn't. Again, it wasn't. Uh, but he was in a difficult situation. He was in one of the most painful times of his life. And I, I put the question in a way that I thought I would really get the answer distilled. Because if I asked it the way I just said, it would have been a long. But I said, what's the most important phrase that you can, that you've ever read in Latin. <laughs> What's the most important Latin phrase carrying a lesson with it? And it was then, I, I, I was sitting there uh, congratulating myself for having figured out this great question. And of course, whenever we do that, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the forces tell us we're making a great mistake. Um, well, I was distracted by that for a moment my father made this utterance that I thought was his last gasp. Eh. Oh, no. oh my God, where was the doctor? And there was a, still a long pause and he seemed to be gathering something and I couldn't tell if, uh, if he was having a hard time breathing or if he was just thinking about something, but he was toiling in his, he was really moving and holding his head and really trying to answer that question because that's a big question to ask my dad. Zul, and it startled me and I had no idea what was happening or why this word, which is associated with a horror movie in the 80s, <laughs> would be coming out at this time. And then while I was, I probably wasn't breathing for the third syllable, Tet, and now I knew for sure I was, I didn't know what was going on, that we were probably back in hallucinations, which we had been through with him in some of his trials. 
And then he said, it means let us rejoice. Exultet is what he said. I really didn't expect that good of an answer. I definitely didn't expect that it would be distilled into one word. But that's my pops. <laughs> that's what he distilled. That's what he did for us. He distilled the, the spirit and the words uh, in a way that we can understand. And for that, we are very grateful. And we are so grateful for you being here today. Um, I wanted to say that, again, we don't need to hang our heads today because my dad died after a long life and he died happily. The, 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 the day before he died, he spent telling stories um, of his favorite stories um, around some of his favorite people. Um, and when he died, he was surrounded by my mother and my sister and myself and others. Um, he had good last days. And we cannot, we don't need to hang our heads, but raise them and, and think of what we're going to do because it's so important to my father that everyone understands something that Jesus said. Jesus used uh, sort of a, a, a bad word a couple times. And according to my dad's copy of the Bible, he said, <laughs> um, he said, you idiots, <laughs> speaking to a particular group of people, faith without good works is useless. So if you find yourself feeling like you're getting to heaven because you've said the right words in the right place or you've done the right dances or moves with your hands or you sat in the right building at the right time, I think you, are, you haven't understood what my father has had to say. And I suggest you think about it again. <laughs> but. He is at peace also because he was ready to die his whole life. He said to me many times and others, I never expected to live past my 30s, is what he said. Certainly when he was being chased by the Guatemalan uh, military and their operatives, United States backed operatives trying to kill my father. When they did that, they continued to chase after him and offer him death threats long after he left Guatemala and uh, we all lived with that in our house. Um, what I want to do is share with you a few of the quotes that he highlighted in the Bible because those were really his words to live by. So I, I thought that people would be interested in that. What sort of what would Blaze say if he was if he was here, or in this case at least, what would his son think that he would say if he was here? <laughs> Now, that's a very different question than if, if you ask me, what do I think he would say if this was any of your funerals or mine or anyone else's? <laughs> and he would probably spend about 65% of the time on a political rant about the injustices of the day. I'm not going to do that. My mother told me not to emulate that particular part about my father. Um, however, if it's 2% of the time, it's okay. And I know that he would say at some point, Trump, get your hands off of those children at the border and, get, and free them out of that detention center right now. Stop lying, stop covering up, and get out of the White House before climate change takes you out. The first and most important is, however, let your love light shine. Stand in awe, he highlighted. Don't stifle the spirit, he highlighted. Give thanks constantly, he highlighted. And how did he let his love light shine? He let his love light shine, you could really see it when he sang. When he was lecturing 
you saw you were seeing his mind, and his posture would show you that because he would often stand on his toes. He would stand on his toes in a, like the leaning tower of pizza, pizza <laughs> coming toward the microphone, um, and it always looked like he was going to fall. But when he's saying, it was the opposite, and it was completely toward the heavens, and he would absolutely let go, and uh, his arms would kind of fold back, and his head would go back, and he was he just seemed to levitate. And so no holds bar when you're singing, folks. If you want to take a, a, a lesson home, try to find a video of my dad singing and uh, live your life with that uh, rejoicing. To be at peace with everyone, he highlighted. Be at peace with everyone so that bitter roots don't start growing. Don't stay away from the meetings. If you want to stay at peace, you have to talk to the people that you're with regularly. God's justice is never served by anger. Don't stay away from the meetings of the community. And most importantly, do what you are doing, which was his way. He has a Latin phrase for it. Colleen, how do you say it in Latin? Age quote agis. Do what you're doing. Focus on, on what is in, is in front of you. And make amends on a daily basis so that you can be in peace and you can help others do the same. He said to me once, I told him about some troubles I was having and he was getting frustrated at, at me for it because he could tell that I was getting too serious about it. And he said, just listen. Never let it stop your humor. <laughs> In an angry way, as if he were leaning into the microphone. And he would express it, he would keep himself in peace by expressing himself, obviously, in venues like this, but also privately when he would see someone on, on television uh, supporting the war uh, against Nicaragua in the 80s, for example like one of its architects, Ronald Reagan, would come up in the 80s quite often, and my father would, would respond to his image with this sacred mantra. <laughs> <laughs> raspberries, raspberries for Reagan, the new and upcoming Office of the Americas campaign. No, that one's already been done, actually. Another one, stay spiritual. See if you can do it all the time. That's, that's where he has something in common again with the Dalai Lama. It's not something to visit when you're hoping for kudos or cookies. It's not something to do when someone approaches you who can either hurt or harm you. People say you know someone's character by the way they treat someone who can neither harm nor hurt them. So my dad was a great man by that measure. He welcomed everyone to the house with brother, neighbor, and an award-winning hug. The greatest I've ever received. Do that and you'll be healthy. He's saying spiritual sounds at night, lullabies. Over in Killarney, many years ago, my mother sang a song to me. She sang so sweet and low. Twas a simple little ditty in her good old Irish way. And I'd give the world if I could hear her sing that song today. I fell asleep to that song almost every night till I was 11 or 12. And it helped on the project of staying spiritual. I'm almost done, folks. Thank you for having uh, patience with me. I have to complete this, <laughs> so I definitely will not be leaving. <laughs> and you'll see um, that, I, that I've, if, if you try to, to stop me before I finish, you'll see just how much civil disobedience I've learned from this man. <clears throat> um, which is an example of this highlighted in the Bible. Various versions of the idea highlighted in the Bible. Work with your adversaries, for example. Love your enemies, a wild and radical idea. Love your enemies and give to beggars. Let justice be your only revenge. Jackson Brown has a song about that. 
quoting Tomas Borges. He said, I want justice to be my only revenge. I don't want to see my adversaries harmed. I want to see the injustices that they've caused solved. That could feel like justice. I once went to visit the mission in, in San Francisco, where I used to live very close. And I thought I'd bring my dad. It would be a perfect place to bring uh, a priest. And uh, we would go together. This was a father-son trip. He came to visit me. And I walked him to the door, but he didn't enter. Person at the door, a very nice young man, said, good morning. Welcome, welcome to the mission. It's just $5 each. Because <laughs> it's a historical building as well. But the fact that it's a historical building does not change the fact that it's a house of God. So my father looked at this poor young man and said, you cannot charge admission to a house of God. <laughs> and stormed away. So... Let your own light shine <laughs> and interpret your scriptures as you will. Ay, Nicaragua, Nicaraguita. This is a song that he and I sang together a cappella at most of the parties that we went to, most places that we went. And it's the Sandinista Revolution song that celebrates the agricultural revolution of the Sandinistas moving toward cooperatives as opposed to uh, corporate models in the 70s and the 80s. Redoing agriculture redoes the society. And that was Sandino's vision. Very few people know that. Ay, Nicaragua. Nicaraguita, la flor más linda de mi querer, abonada con la bendita Nicaraguita, sangre de dirajen, ay Nicaragua, sos más dulcita de la melita de Tamagas, pero ahora que ya sos libre Nicaraguita, Yo te quiero mucho más. I miss you, Papa. And I also feel closer to you. Renew your mind with spiritual revolution. He underlined twice, or probably a few times. And he had his ideas on death and renewal completely set and ready for his death in the 30s, and he kept them with him every single day. He loved Jesus, but he went beyond and added and interpreted and I know that he can turn wine into water. And I know that he can not just do unto others as you would have them do unto you, but do unto others when the other asks you to and how they ask you to could be an improvement, especially for us with a history of colonization. So we rethought these big ideas as a family regularly. But I'll leave you with this. My dad wants you to rejoice as you take opportunities to work for peace in your own way with your own light. So please keep in touch with us to continue that project. And here's this... Uh, final line from the Bible that he emphasized much and I'll leave you with that and thank you so much where you sow so you will reap if you sow in the field of the spirit you will reap 
the harvest of eternal life. Never grow tired of doing good. We will reap a harvest at the proper time. So while we, the living, still have time, do good to all. Let us be an instrument of thy peace. Thank you so much.